Alright guys, we're getting new soffits, fascia, and eaves trough on our house. You can kind of tell, oh, easily, right there, the bottom one's not done, and the top section around the window is done. That's done up top there, and uh, I've done all the other eaves troughs and fascias in the, in the house, but now I'm I'm just getting a little bit too old to be standing up there for five, six, seven hours a day for a week. So now you can see the first one's got a cover on it, and the next three do not yet. And that's probably the biggest part of the job is just covering up those big ugly 2x10s up there. So the guys have been great. They're here every day, working hard, doing nice work. How can I complain about that, huh? I can't. So the old Penderosa is getting a bit of a facelift this year. Here's Anthony just having a break, texting his wife. He's now he's smiling, he's not looking up. Works hard. So nothing's really changed from when I was doing it to the garage and to the shed and to the house that I used to own in operating system number one. You guys know where that came from, that was wife number one. Wife number one's like an operating system, right? You can delete the operating system off the computer, but you never really, really get rid of operating system number one. So the company's doing a great job. Thanks. I imagine you'd want to go on YouTube, right? Oh, all the time. Yeah, it's, it's positive, it's not negative. Excellent. Unless, of course, you don't want me to put your face on, and then I will not publish this. <laughs> all good. Okay. I ask everybody that. I don't put kids uh, under 14 on. Yeah. And I, I ask every single person. So there's the water barrel, the entrance, got the gate propped open. There's the old eaves trough, and then this is their little workshop here to cut the soffits. That's a standard operation. You see that for every, every soffit company. And uh, let's see. Let's walk over here to see how we're making out on the, on the potato. Oh, we're getting beans. Look at that. We're getting beans, flowers, and the potato flowers are starting to come. There you go, Ken. But it's been a rough year for the garden because we had three weeks of rain. My sump was full of water for three weeks. Pump was running non-stop. Anyway, here we are, back, back where we all understand and know. All right, <clears throat> my friends, the uh, soffits and fascia and trim on the house are all done. The whole thing's done in metal. So now I don't have to paint the house or crawl up on ladders anymore. It was a big job because they went around the entire house the original soffits were plywood, right? So they did a nice job of that. And uh, now the flowers are starting to come back. It's probably been, oh, more than a week since they left. Our little tree that the deer uh, rutted on la last year is coming, but I've heard say that the first year the trees really come back and then it's the second year you have to watch. So anyway, the grass looks pretty good, eh, Ken? Uh, there is a slight uh, lighter color from where the big big huge tree used to be right about there but yeah the old Penderosa is looking great so I'm just going to take you on a small yard tour I have not had a chance to do a second um, fertilizer yet this year you can see right there do you see that yellowish stripe that's where they laid a piece of tin down and it burnt the lawn that's fine. I mean, it was a it was a five day job for them. So let's just walk around into the back. So things have changed a lot in a week and a half. Look at the lilies. Isn't that something? Here we go. So this is my setup for the snow barrel, rain for the rain barrel. Sorry, joke. 
So the, in the summer the rain comes down here and then in the winter time I move that eaves trough over to this side and the water comes out here and I use a 90 on a big four inch pipe out to about the same one as the rain barrel drains to and that uh, drains the moisture away from the house in the winter. So yes, we'll start back here. I was showing you the lilies. It's beautiful. It took them a long time. We are about two weeks behind and look at this. I've got some mushrooms in the yard which we would never eat of course. So I haven't mowed for six days. Things are looking good though. Look at the old poplar tree there. He's just looking great. So let's just go over to the garden now. We've had rain three nights in a row. We have to pick beans today. We'll have to put on rubber boots to pick beans. So look at, look at that. They're just beautiful. Eh? Potatoes have a bit, a bit of insect bite on them. One didn't make it there. And over here. Uh, pumpkin, squash and pumpkin on this side. Potatoes of course. Now these are white potatoes, Ken, so they might not do very well. But look at my corn. Look at the silk on that. Excuse the wind. You can probably hear a whistle in the camera, eh? And the peas are coming. They're not they're not fantastic like they were last year. And the big onions are coming. Kohlrabi. And then these three plants are zucchini here. Peppers, they're not doing all that well. Oh, got a little one. So yes, the yard has come a long way since we took out the spruce trees. And look at the apples. They're, they're going to triple in size yet. And this is just hanging heavy, eh? Got to take out that branch. Remove all dead branches off of an apple tree. Maybe if I get that 100cc chainsaw running, we'll do that. So, I'm trying to guard you from the... So we had the rain last night, you can see it on the deck there. Those are impatience. And I'm getting rid of all my bins. I should show you that. But anyway, here's a begonia. My father called those the Norseman Rose. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Three different colors this year. This is where we keep our herbs. They're always in the sun, just on the edge of the deck. Rosemary, uh, oregano, basil, and I think that's something different. Uh, like, what's it called? Cilantro, correct. <clears throat> Good thing I labeled it. Mrs. P, you mean. Okay, so here's our <clears throat> salad garden. Hey, hey, baby. You know that's going to be good. Mmm. And then our... We redid the shed. And put all our critters back up on there that we bring home from Mexico. Each year we bring home a different metal sculpture. But look at back here in the maintenance man's area. Uh, don't look at this, this is all leaving. But here's my bins. I think... I don't want to show you my combination on this expensive lock here. Un momento, por favor. So 
so this is getting somewhere already um, all of my mower parts are in those boxes up there and then we're also going to get rid of a lot of the stuff in here that's never been used or is just timed out on life right so yeah there we go we had the garage cladded too eh And then there's the soffit and fascia on the house, right? So no more painting, no more climbing. So thank you for watching me uh, film this little yard tour slash soffit update. See you guys. Hi guys, Bruce here. So I've decided to keep this stuff outside. And yes, the lids do collect water. But it isn't the end of the earth. I think the last ones I had sitting here, they were probably 15 years old, they collected water too. So they're not going to go in the shed. Why would you, if you had protection and storage for your lawnmower wheels, or your wheels, different hubcaps and height adjusters, why would you store them inside a shed when uh, the shed is so important, right? So let's go back in here, because we live in a fortress around here. Oh no. And there we are. Now you guys might remember just before this looked similar. But it really isn't. Uh, the little John Deere cart is down there. And then the gardening stuff is presently at the front. And look at all the bench space we had. Yes, I was a bad man and I put the two chainsaws on the bench if you can see back there. I got two motors down there. Briggs and Stratton horizontals, old style, new style. Okay, so there's up there are my motors. The, I just mentioned the Franken motor. And the two chainsaws on the bench. We, we could probably put them in the little cart down there. Yeah, that's, that's an option. But really down there, that that's pretty much inaccessible bench space anyway. So, so we're good there. So I took a level out. And the shed is very, very close to level, considering how many years it's been here, right? And, uh, yeah. So there. Now, uh, I have, my ultimate dream is to cover this with a, a uh, kind of like an A-frame or a, an angled roof. And then back my tractors into here and move the wood pile back to where the tractors are. So that everything's kind of in one workspace. That might happen. Not sure. Anyway, thanks for letting me ramble on, guys. Alright, my friends, this is the type of thing that, that I've got. Wheels. Wheels different. Hubcaps and height adjusters. Over here we've got uh, transmission and thatcher blades. We'll just have a look in there. Show you what the kind of thing we're talking about. I've got... Uh, they're not full because they're so heavy, right? To look at the wheels this is one of the bags of wheels or boxes of wheels and hubcaps just general wheels in general all different kinds I keep every drive wheel of course because they're the ones that go back there is a pressure pumps pulleys and back there is mower blades that's an interesting one let's just have a look into that one see that 20 inch 21 inch 22 inch Yes, and I'm going to build some kind of a tarp over this so these don't fill up with water. And then here, we'll just show you in one of these boxes in here. Let's just pull down a quantum box. So there's a tank. It's not a quantum box, it's a, the other box, not quantum. Quantum starter in here. So there's a, a shroud, gas tanks, flywheel, Updraft carpet, that's valuable. Right there. So yeah. That's inside of one of these boxes. And you can just imagine all the different stuff that's in here. It's kind of repetitive by make, right? One moment. Alright. Tecumseh. Briggs and Stratton. Honda. Etc.
Thank you. Well, hi guys, Bruce here. Well, today we're going to have to thank two people. I'll be right back. Klaus Lundberg. I did uh, thank on the da the daily live stream that Top Conquer has. I did get a chance to thank uh, Klaus from Hobby Motor for these. Now I guess these are perfectly spaced to put a coil around a flywheel and also they've got all kinds of other torque conversion uh, converters on here. And it says, uh, is there a note? Oh yeah. Enjoy this OEM tool. So that's a joke we have. Uh, Klaus is the OEM Obi-Wan Kenobi OEM. So thanks again, Klaus. It's always fun to get stuff in the mail. And then here we'll face you down. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't. I'll go right down. This is from BSS Motors, I believe. Just by checking it out. One moment, I'll get some uh, scissors. They sent me an email the other day saying, did you get the... Did you? Oh my god, okay! There was also another discussion about these. BSS small engines, there we go. Let's go fix it is his motto. And we got three small wrenches. Now what these are for, if I could, oh man, if I could just reach that box. Let's stand on this uh, movable device. In my 60s, I'm standing on something with wheels. Can you believe that? But if I'm careful, we won't do this in, in another few years. Okay, so you've got a... This is connected to the lawnmower. You guys all know how these click on if you work on small engines, right? This goes around there like that, and onto there like that. Squeezes those two tabs together, and allows you to pull out the cable without using needle nose. And I tell you, sometimes if one of these tabs is off a little bit, like sticking out, these ones are good, but sometimes the, the tab sticks out at about an angle like that, you can't get these off very easily. They, they come off, but, so that's fantastic. So thanks a lot. So you guys, go to BSS Small Engines and subscribe, like, hit the bell, all that stuff that you know you have to do. Now we got to find a spot for BSS small engines. Ooh, I'm running out, but I see one right there. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put them right here between the lawnmower detective and tinkering tailor. Right there. I hope you guys can see that. I'm going to have to move that light there because I'm going to have to start moving my stickers to the to the west. Come on, I'm trying to do this here for you. Grampy and I have a heck of a time with these. There we go. See? Now let's get this up right. I think that's a good spot right there. It's where I wiped. So my wall is really becoming something, isn't it? We even got a, a couple guys up there. Thanks a lot, everybody. Goodbye. Hi, guys. Bruce here. <laughs> well, if this is what I think it is, I goofed up. And this is for Hank. Hippa Hank. So, I went online on the house, set this page up on Amazon, and I bought what I think is 10 Tecumseh primer bulbs. And at the same time, out in the garage, I looked them up, and I put them in my cart out here. And I never refreshed the screen. When I came back to the garage, about a day later, maybe two days later, and I hit order. So down here, Good boy. 
we got tear here, it says. I don't even have to cut it open. They are making packages easier to open in general. Oh, me and my big mo. Oh. Yay! I hope they're okay, Ken. Or Pank. But I needed them badly. Let's see what this one is. Open here. Look at that. Yay! <laughs> I know. They come from Wing Wang, China. HIPAA Pack 10 LX55 TVZ90 TV120. Yeah, that's the same thing. Now, if I do this right, I'm a terrible package opener upper. But if I do this right, can I put them all into one bag and hang them in my parts area there? Maybe. Ooh. No, it's not going to let me keep the bubble. Keep the bubble! <laughs> well, I got Tecumseh bulbs coming out of my Tecumseh bulbs now. I may not even open this one up. I might just do a smart thing. And this, right? This is, this is a good idea. As long as I don't puncture any valuable stuff. Yep. Now, can I do that with this bag? That'd be fun. Maybe. Oh, I do have... Huh? Yeah, I'll use this one. This is my other Tecumseh bulb leftover thingy-majiggy, right? So I'll just throw those in here. Yeah, that's going to work. So these will be used presently. I had to put a used carburetor on a Tecumseh the other day. You may see the video, I don't know. Hooray! I don't know, boy. I don't think Amazon's doing anything for the environment. Except I don't have to leave the house. Here, Hank, I bought some HIPAA stuff. <laughs>